Hi everybody, I'm JT. Welcome to another video from me here at Campervan Journey. And we're all loaded up and just about to head off on our next adventure to France. So if you'd like to follow us on our trip, remember to hit the button to subscribe and uh, you can follow us as we journey on our latest trip in our Volkswagen California, exploring some of the wonderful parts of France. And if that sounds like you, we look forward to sharing our trip with you over the next few videos. So I've just spent um, the last uh, couple of hours getting everything set up and loaded into the van. And if you've seen any of our videos before, you'll be aware that uh, we were hoping to rationalise down some of the kit and equipment that we take. And I'm pleased to say that we've managed to do that. So let me just show you in the back of the van. So we're now better loaded and tidied in than we were before. So our tent, believe it or not, is stowed inside. It's bound down the back, our new Robin's tent, our sleeping gear. Uh, we swear by these really useful boxes to store uh, and keep our bits organised. Our new Total Cool fridge and a few other bits and bobs around the back. For clothing and storage, again you might have seen on previous videos, we love these Vanessa window bags. So there's four sections in each, one, two, and then the other one is stored behind the table. Three, four, and then that gives us uh, clothing storage for each of us. So we've each got, imaginatively, one section each. So we've got everything loaded in here for two, two weeks away, traveling around France, pitching up with our tent as we go. We were stopping in three uh, separate locations as we go on our trip. And this time we're going to be crossing from New Haven, going on the ferry across to Dieppe. So we'll check in with you a little bit later on uh, as we make our journey from here in Salisbury across to the ferry. We get lots of inquiries about our bike rack that we use and whether or not you can open and close the tailgate once it's in position and as you can just see I've just managed to close the tailgate with no problem at all. So this is the four bike uh, carrying version of the Atira Strada. Um, we've had it now for three years, been really really pleased with it. If you fancy watching a full review there's one on the channel and you can find it by clicking up here or looking on the channel pages but it's a very good rack for carrying four bikes. Also being able to get in and out of the back which is a key reason why we changed to it. We did have the tailgate one that mounted on the back but just found that a little bit impractical for various reasons so really really pleased with that one. So we are on our way. Our summer trip has started. We've got about a two hour drive from home to New Haven, where we're catching the ferry across to Dieppe. It's a trip that we've done in the past, a few years ago. Most recently we've been travelling on the Euro Tunnel. That's become such a familiar route for me that when we left home, I actually turned left and just followed the route as if we were going to catch the unit, which was completely wrong. And I had to turn around after about a mile when Claire said, you're going the wrong way. So we're now going the right way and we're heading towards So it's a beautiful summer's evening. Traffic is a bit busier than I thought it would be. It's a lovely drive across the south coast down to New Haven. Hopefully we'll get a lovely sunset and a really smooth crossing. A new place, a new home for a while. Let me feel alive. Nothing to hold me back. Take my time, just enjoy the ride. A new man passing by. Life is good, best I've ever felt Get me up, so in, so I can't find myself Wow, 
welcome to New Haven Ferry Port. Port with the shortest queue in England. So New Haven as a port is a lot smaller than Dover and there are two lanes of traffic queuing to get in and that's got to mean it's going to be a lot quicker to board the ship, go through passport control and do all the bits and pieces that we do. But we are well ahead of schedule, we don't need to be here until 10, it's half past 8 and the ferry doesn't depart until, is it 11? Yeah. 11 o'clock. So easy trip, lovely trip across the south coast along the M27, A27, uh, past Goodwood, past Brighton on a beautiful summer's evening. Quite a contrast to our last trip to the Eurotunnel. Fingers crossed, looking at the weather, it's going to be a, a lovely calm crossing. Lane number four, all the way down. So there it is, the ferry's just up behind us there. Really, really short queue really really short queue with um hopefully not too long to wait before we get on so a complete complete contrast to when we were last down at Eurotunnel Uh, it took us about two hours between arriving and actually boarding. The queue was held up more by waiting for all of the passengers on the ferry already to um, disembark before we were able to load up. But we're now on board, we've set sail bang on the, the dot of when we were supposed to depart and got a four hour crossing all that way to Dieppe in France. And then we'll try and get a couple of hours sleep before we arrive in France uh, early in the morning. So if you're in New Haven and you're looking for a park up to spend the night in your camper van, it looks like there's one just over here, just as we're, as we're ex exiting the port. There's got to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, at least, at least 10 or 12 motorhomes parked up there. A lovely view. Look at that reflection of the moon across the, the sea. So it's half past four in the morning. We're just waiting to disembark. A really smooth crossing on to the next stage of our trip. Somewhere for breakfast. And my secret destination. Bonjour, 
me up Somewhere new, somewhere I can find myself I feel, I feel, I feel, I feel so alive As I reach out, reach out, reach out, reach out to the sky I found my way, I found my way I was in the dark against it all But made it through the day Cause I found my way, I found my way Times, I know I'll be okay Cause I found my way For those of you who know my interest in motorsport, you'll see why in just a second. Benny, you awake? This used to be a Formula One racing track. This is the You have arrived. So I hope you can hear me because we are by a main road, but this is the uh, old Formula One circuit uh, in, forgive me if I'm pronouncing it incorrectly, but I, I say Rheem. And uh, in the 1950s, the Formula One cars would run right down this straight at 150, 160 miles an hour on what is, as you can see, a public road. But as a local um, group who's doing their best to preserve these buildings as they are, if you've been to Goodwood in the UK, this is like Goodwood 20, 30 years ago. This is what Goodwood perhaps really should look like because these are preserved as they would have been. There's a real sort of magical feeling about it. It's wonderful. The old grandstand buildings. And it is just in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of the field, surrounded by all these huge agricultural fields. But you can almost hear the cars barreling down here at huge speed. I know I've said it many, many times before, but this is one of the things I love about being able to travel around in our camper van, is that we can stop places like this on the way. And it's just fantastic. And I said, I've been wanting to come here for a long time and just to soak up the atmosphere is brilliant. Are you right at the top? So we've just come through the access tunnel underneath the main straight, underneath the track, to go to the grandstands, which are on the opposite side to the pit buildings and we really are right in the middle of a field now. There's the back of the grandstands. Uh, acres and acres of arable land. 
Uh, here we are, top of the grandstands, right at the top, right at the back, probably a little bit windy. And then ours, our trusty van, just down there on the pit straight. And that would have been the main straight going that way. So we've really enjoyed our little visit here, but it's, I guess, really all thanks to the local preservation society who've done a lot of the restoration. And in 2004, this is what it looked like. Whereas present day, this is what it looks like. So thanks to their efforts, we've had a great little stop off on our trip. So what a great stop off on our journey down to our first camp site. And uh, if I'm a bit cheeky, then maybe I can persuade the rest of the family that we just do a quick lap of what remains of the circuit, but it uh, shouldn't take us too long. It's about three miles round, but uh, really, really, really evocative place to come. And if you're into motorsport at all, then come, come and have a look. It's well worth the trip. <laughs> A new home for a while, let me feel alive. Nothing to hold me back, take my time, just enjoy the ride. A new man passing by, life is good, best I've ever felt. Get me up, so in, so where I can find myself. It's half past 12 and we've travelled this morning around about uh, 350 miles which is about 550, 600 kilometres and we've stopped for lunch just off the A5 uh, auto route um, probably around about 100 kilometres from Dijon we've got about an hour and a half left on our trip until we get to our first campsite so we pulled over um, to have some lunch and again if you've seen videos that I've done before you'll know that I think that these French airs are fantastic great way to travel so we've got a lovely spot here in the shade and just enjoy some baguette and cold meat So we travelled 530 miles since we left home and I filled out with fuel. We are 8 kilometres from our destination and the fuel lights just come on so we're just going to fill up and we're almost, almost there. <laughs> So after a six hour drive today and a total of about 550 miles, um, which I guess is approaching 800 kilometers, uh, we've arrived in Utopia La Plage Blanche in the Jura region of France, uh, where we're gonna be staying for the next three nights. So chill checked in, um, gonna go and just set our tent up, get pitched, and then we'll be ready to relax and enjoy the next few days. Uh, for those of you that are interested, for three nights here, uh, it's costing us around about 150 euros in total, so about 50 euros a night. Uh, that's for a larger pitch uh, with electric hookup and access to all of the facilities and activities that are here as well. So uh, really looking forward to winding down and relaxing. As I said um, previously, it's a great stopover for our trip down to the Alps, breaks up the journey. Very much enjoying 
being back here at Utopia La Plage Blanche for what will be our fourth visit in the last five or six years. So it took us about, um, about an hour probably to set our new tent up, which is an improvement over the previous one in terms of the time. Um, luggage wise, we brought less, which was our plan and everything was just a little bit quicker. So we've managed to achieve all of, hopefully achieved all of our objectives and we'll find out over the next two or three days once uh, we are settled in. But I'll give you a tour of our tent uh, in a future video so remember just to uh, click the button to subscribe if you want to follow to keep up with that So if you enjoyed the video so far remember to hit the button to like and hit the button to subscribe and join us for part two of a trip where I'll show you around the campsite, show you around our pitch, and we'll take you on a tour of some of the places that we visited over the next few days. But thanks very much indeed for watching.